In this video, we're going to look at finding the missing side of a right triangle with inverse trigonometry. And trigonometry means sine, cosine, and tangent. All right, so using these to find the angle of a triangle. All right, so before attempting this lesson, just make sure you're comfortable with SOHCAHTOA. All right, the definition of sine, cosine, and tangent as the ratios of the sides of a right triangle. And then just general inverse function notation and what an inverse function is. All right, so when finding values of sine, cosine, and tangent, we have to be told an angle, and then we use that to find the ratio of the sides. All right, but throughout uh, the problems we've done before, we're kind of just given a, a letter to represent an angle, but what if we actually wanna know how big is this angle? All right, in order to do this, we're gonna need to use inverse trig functions. All right, so quick review of inverse functions. The first thing is we use this little notation, this little minus one, right next to our function name to represent that we're doing the inverse. And the property of the inverse is, if I switch from the original function to the inverse, my two values, my input and my output, flip places. So really this is the most important thing for you to remember to do well in this lesson, is that an inverse function flips the input and output. What we're gonna have to do first is create this equation and then flip it to create that equation. So it's gonna be kind of two steps. All right, so what are the inverse trig functions? Well, they're just the trig functions, sine, cosine, and tangent with those little minus ones. All right, they also have another name, and this really helps if you're gonna get into like programming or computer science or something like that, because you can actually just type these names out. So sine inverse is the same as arc sine. If you just put this arc in front of it, you also get the inverse function. All right, we're mainly gonna focus on this notation because that's what we're comfortable with. But if you see these come up, they're just the inverse trig functions by a different name. All right, so here's a general strategy for finding the missing angles of a right triangle. All right, we still have to create the original equation using our original sine, cosine, and tangent functions using SOHCAHTOA. All right, same to stuff you've done before. You just create sine of this thing as this fraction. All right, the angle you care about will be inside the parentheses because we always have sine of some angle, something like that. All right, once we've created the equation, now we use the inverse property. We switch from sine to sine inverse and then things are gonna flip places. And we won't be able to solve these problems by hand, so we'll just have to use a calculator. Uh, and typically we'll just round our answer to two decimal places, because that's actually quite uh, a good accuracy when you're talking about degrees, all right, two decimal places. All right, so let's see this in practice, all right? We wanna find what is the value of this missing angle x, all right, this x value that we don't know. Right. Well, the first thing we'll do is we're gonna use SOHCAHTOA, and the original trig function. So a lot of people kind of skip a step. They know they want to use the inverse trig functions at some point. All right, so they just try to go straight to that, but you have to use the original ones first. And let's look at our triangle. Our right, focus on this angle. This is going to be, let's use a different color. This side is going to be my hypotenuse. Across from my angle is my opposite side. And the remaining one is my adjacent side. So this one, the uh, sides I already know are the opposite and adjacent ones. So you could do the Pythagorean theorem to figure out the hypotenuse, but that's extra work you don't have to do. So what I'm gonna say is I have the opposite and the hypotenuse. Which of these three trig functions make sense to use? Well, sine and cosine both require the hypotenuse, which I don't have. So those don't make sense to use, but I do have the opposite and adjacent side. So it makes sense to use tangent for this problem because that is the sides of the triangle that I have. So I'm gonna use tangent tangent of the angle I'm looking for, right? The angle always goes in the parentheses is equal to TOA. So opposite on the top, adjacent on the bottom, right? So you have to create this equation with the original trig function first. All right, but now you can switch it to tan inverse. And remember that property with inverses, all that happens when you switch to an inverse is these two things flip places. And that's it. Now X is by itself and it's 10 inverse of 80 over 90. Again, that's not something you can solve by hand. So you're gonna have to use a calculator. All right, one thing, if you're using any type of calculator, there's two settings. There's one that's called radians and one that's called degrees. All 
if you don't know how to switch between these on your calculator, just let me know, I can show you. Uh, but since we're talking about the little degree symbol here, we want it in degrees. All right, we'll talk about radians at a later time, but right now make sure your calculator's in degrees. That's right, so your answer's in degrees. And I'm gonna do 10 inverse of 80 divided by 90. And I get 41.633. Again, we're just rounding to two decimal places so that three does not round it up. So 41.63 degrees is my final answer. So make sure you're doing this first step here of writing using the original trig functions first before you start trying to do all the inverse stuff. Right. Another example, we're trying to find this x value here. Let's label the sides of our triangle. So we have the hypotenuse, we have the opposite side, and we're missing the adjacent side. All right, so here's where you can kind of think for yourself for a second, which of our three trig functions does it make sense to use? I'll even help you a bit, All right, so Katoa. All right, well, we have opposite and hypotenuse. We don't have adjacent, so we don't have adjacent. So it doesn't make sense to use those two. We're gonna use sine. All right, so sine of X is the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. That's my original Sokotoa equation but I change it to a sine inverse equation because I'm looking for the angle. These two things are gonna flip places. And now I use my calculator. All right, making sure it's in degrees or else you get some really weird answers. Um, sine inverse of 3.9 divided by 8.1. And I get 28.782. Again, that, that two there is not gonna round up the number before it, so I just have that as my final answer. All right, I'll do one more example. All right, we're looking for this x. We're going to label our sides, hypotenuse, opposite, adjacent. And real quickly, because it's similar to the last one, you should know that if I have the opposite and hypotenuse, it makes sense to use sine. So sine of x is the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. Always write that original trig uh, equation first before you change it to sine inverse. Those things flip places. And then I use my calculator. 4.2 divided by 9.9. .9. I get 25.102, which I'm rounding to two decimal places. I can just write it as, oops, I don't need the two. 25.10 or 25.1 degrees is the answer. All right, here's one for you to try on your own. I right, find the missing value of X. All right, so pause the video and I'll show you the answer in three, two, one. All right, and the final answer you should get is 29.36 degrees. So there's a couple of things to recognize. You have the opposite and adjacent side, not the hypotenuse. So tangent is the trig function you wanna use. You could take the extra time to figure out what this value is and then use another trig function, but that's just more steps you don't have to do. All right, so I write my original function, switch it to the inverse function, and plug it into the calculator, and you get this. We hadn't had to do this in the previous examples, but the seven after where we wanna end, the seven is bigger than, or five or bigger, so it rounds this up to a six. And you should be careful with your rounding, um, and that's our final answer. All right, so go ahead and practice this. If you're comfortable with SOGATOA, all right, just make sure you write that original function first, or original equation first, and then change it to the inverse. All right, but if you can do that, you'll be very comfortable with these problems.